Hey, hey, I'm Kyle and I'm a local wedding filmmaker photographer here in the Pacific Northwest and I'm so excited to bring you all another color grading episode today inside of DaVinci Resolve and exactly how I take my wedding footage from this into this. So if this is something that interests you or possibly in the future, please help me out and go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below. And as always, go ahead and get that pen and paper ready and let's do this. All right, what's going on y'all? So here we go, another episode, color grading inside DaVinci Resolve 16. I unfortunately, I haven't made the update yet to 17, but uh, hopefully that comes sometime soon whenever it gets out of beta, but uh, we're still in 16 right now. So hopefully uh, that's okay. But uh, today we are looking at a clip from an elopement that I did this past summer. Uh, it was freaking awesome. Um, they're, they are just a vibe, um, as you can tell, and their attire is just on point, like that burgundy suit, dude. I mean, he, like Dusty, man, he was just, he was killing it. He was killing it. Um, so I did get a lot of requests on exactly how I graded um, this film. So, you know, let's uh, like jump into this and show you exactly how I did it. So um, this is the final stage of where we're going to be getting to. And as you can see here, we got our seven node system right here, but we're gonna go ahead and delete this because, hey man, it is a tutorial and it is on color grading and we need to learn, so we're gonna start over. Um, but I would like to preface, since this um, is a pretty small you know, node structure that it really works great for you know, my workflow. We're not gonna be doing a lot of uh, keyframing um, you know, adjustments or, or micro adjustments. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of global stuff, uh, mainly because it works really well um, with my workflow, it's fast and efficient, but I'm still able to achieve a great look. Um, so if that's something that you're after as well, I would definitely stay here and watch this all the way through because hopefully you'll learn a lot and uh, you can apply some of these tips and things that I use for even wedding or elopement work inside your work as well. If you're doing music videos, commercial work, that sort of thing. So um, let's go ahead and dive into this thing. So uh, our first note here, we got noise reduction. So we'll just label that as NR. And uh, the reason why this is on the first node, just to make sure we're sending the cleanest signal. So um, I think it's just a good habit just to get it on that first node there. Um, our second node is going to be for our exposure. So how bright the image is, uh, controlling the actual contrast of the image. Um, that's going to be for that node specifically. Moving on, third node is going to be our adjustment or our uh, white balance. So uh, essentially getting the tones aligned before we actually apply our look to the image. Moving on, we got our fourth node and it's going to be the color node. So how we're gonna be adjusting our hue, saturation, and luminance, right? Moving on, fifth node, we got our actual look, the fun part, the split toning, uh, making it our own. And then we'll apply our grain at the end with a little bit of sharpening. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and hop into this, shall we? So uh, we'll save the noise reduction for the end. Let's go ahead and start with the exposure here. And at all, as always, my first step is always going to be bumping up the contrast to start. Now, usually with Blackmagic, 1.3 to 1.4 is a good sweet spot. Um, how do I know if I'm pushing it too much or not enough? It's a good question. So pushing it too much, let's just crank this sucker, right? What am I looking at? I'm looking at the darkness of his coat right here and how the light is actually falling on his cheeks, forehead, her cheeks, etc. And you can see it just looks really muddy, dirty. Um, and this is sometimes where you run into a problem with LUTs and I think LUTs definitely do have a time and place, um, but I think there is a tremendous benefit learning without them because the biggest problem with LUTs is you can't exactly see what it's doing to the image. What I mean by that is I have no idea when I apply a LUT what, what contrast it's putting at or what, what the actual values are that it's applying on lift, gamma, and gain, right? So what's nice about this is I can control individually exactly what I'm doing. And then once you kind of get the hang of it, you can just create your own lets and you know, it works great. So um, keep moving here. So we're gonna bring this back down. Uh, contrast about like 1.4-ish, somewhere around there. Then we're gonna adjust our pivot. 
Now the pivot controls exactly where it's applying the contrast. We'll park it right about there for now. If I need to adjust it, I can always come back to it, right? Um, then we're going on our third step, going to crank up the saturation here, right? So the reason why I'm cranking this up so much, cause you're like, whoa, dude, there's like so much color right now. It's easier to see problem areas. Like normally if I were to leave the saturation down here, like it's fine, but if I crank it, I can now see, I'm like, I have a big magenta red problem overall in this image. And um, I'll explain how we're gonna take that out here in a little bit. But for right now, we're gonna crank this so we can just really see the color and what's going on in the image a lot easier, all right? Then we're gonna go over to probably my favorite feature in DaVinci Resolve, and that is the mid-tone detail. You can find it in the second panel here towards the middle. Um, usually like negative 25 to 30 is like a good sweet spot for me and just it just gives a nice creamy look to it. It kind of like gives you this pro mist effect without having a pro mist on your camera, which is kind of cool. Um, so we got the mid-tone detail. Then we're going to go back to our lift gamma and gain or essentially our lows, our mids and our highs. And we're going to start doing the dance, right? So I'm going to look at my scopes here. As you can see, we got a lot of push and pull. The blues are I'm not gonna be too concerned with this bottom part right here, but I'm mainly looking at this, this bottom line here, making sure that's not, um, that's not clipping. So we're gonna bring this down. We're gonna start bringing this up a little bit, the gamma, and then we're gonna go back to the lift and bring this down and then push our gamma back up. And you can see, again, it's very much a dance, just going back and forth between these until you get it the way that you like it. And for me personally, I really do like pushing the gamma or that mid-tone just because I really like what it does to the skin. Um, I think it overall just, you know, softens it up. And then our last step, we're gonna go to the gain and we're going to just add that little pop, right? And I think that's, that's good right there for now, okay? Now we're gonna go to our adjustment, getting our white balance right. So I'm gonna go over here. Now I kind of already adjusted this. I think this was shot actually like pretty warm. Um, so I brought this down um, probably to around like 5,200 and I'm mainly looking at her dress here and the waterfall and just trying to get that as close to white as possible, knowing that I can correct some of the stuff in a second here with these wheels. So normally with the adjustment, I would take the offset and globally adjust the color um, one way or another. But for this clip in particular, I don't need to do that because when I'm looking at it, I can see that overall there's kind of this red cast to it, but it's mostly living in the mid-tone areas of the image. So I'm gonna go to my gamma and because I know it's in the red and orange, I'm gonna do the opposite because I'm trying to get it out. So I'm gonna actually bring this down towards the teal and look at how much it cleaned this up. Like, look at how much red was in the image before here. Whoop, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, look at before and after. So really clean that up a little bit. And that's the biggest thing with the adjustment node is you just want a good, clean image before I'm actually applying the look. And that's how you can really get a consistent, cohesive look every time, which is nice. Um, now I'm gonna go to my color. And this is where really the look was created versus the actual look node was in these colors. So I'm gonna apply my LUT, which does a subtle tweak to the hue, saturation, and luminance to the colors. But we're actually gonna go in and we're gonna do a little bit more to just give this more of a vibe. Because I was looking, I was like, eh, you know, I just feel like there's still kind of something missing here. So let's go in here. So we got, we're going into the second panel here, hue versus hue. A lot of beginners think that the greens live in the green, but they actually live in the yellows most of the time controls it. And you can, again, key this if you want to. For me personally, just selecting these colors uh, is, is good enough for me. And I think DaVinci has done or does a great job now. So um, the yellows are mostly gonna control the greens in this image and a little bit of the skin tones, but really not that much. So we're going to, increase this yellow up towards the red. And we're gonna push this actually quite a bit and look at like already the vibe that we're getting like in this image, like it's legit, just in that one step. Like it looks, I think it looks so cool. Um, and then what we're gonna do 
is to offset the skin from being so red, I'm actually going to bring this hue down um, just to kind of bring a little bit more of that kind of orange-ish green back into the skin. Not too much, but I think we're going to leave it right there. And that is looking nice. Nice. Okay. Then I'm going to go into the next panel, the hue versus saturation. So now I'm actually controlling the color or the saturation of each uh, color in here. And I'm going to click on the yellow again, and we're going to boost this up. Um, not a ton, but just a little bit again. A little goes a long way with grading. Can't stress that enough. It's a common theme, you know. And look at that. That is nice. All right. So then we're going to go into our look node. And you know me. I like pushing my gamma towards the yellows. I think it's just a, it's just a vibe. So we're going to do that, but I'm like, whoa, now we're kind of getting that like overall cast back. So I'm going to balance that out in the gain and get those whites in her dress to pop, pop again. And it, it, and I'm trying to find the sweet spot here. And I think probably right about there. And you can see the look node did a little bit to the image, but overall just kind of brought everything together and cleaned things up. Like, look at this, man. It's like this. This is a vibe. This is this is a vibe, y'all. This is, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, and again, with color grading, this is the best part. Like, of course, exposure adjustment. I mean, I think you do have to kind of nail that to a certain extent. But getting into this, like, these nodes are fun. Like, have fun with it. Like, make it your own. Pick up a vibe. Like, there's not, like, really a right or wrong way to do it. I mean, just, you know, make sure the, the skin looks great and, you know, just you feel something. And uh, I know it's awesome. So... Um, let's go down here. So we got our final two nodes, easy enough. Apply some grain if you want to, um, which is great. Um, you know, all these grains are awesome, just personal preference, whatever you want to do. And then you can adjust the strength under the opacity right here. And then sharpening, I just go down into the triangle dot here and bring the radius down a little bit. And this is more than enough for me. Um, just a couple points there and uh, you're you're good to go. So this, this is our final image, y'all. I mean, what do you think? What do you think? Go ahead. If you like this, please like it, subscribe down below. And um, let's go ahead and freaking look at this is, um, oh, let me, here we go. Um, this is our before and our after. Before and after. So super cool. Uh, and even if you wanted to, you could um, go back to here. I mean, this clip really doesn't need much noise reduction, but Blackmagic is notorious for that kind of digital color noise. So I'm going to go into temporal noise reduction. It's like three frames. So it's essentially DaVinci's taking three frames and averaging them. Um, we're going to uncheck this and boost this chroma noise out just to get that digital color noise out. And then I might bring like the noise reduction like, I mean, four or five, just to clean it up a little bit. It really doesn't need it that much. But I mean, look at this freaking shot, guys. Like before and after. Like, dude, it's awesome. I love this camera. I love this camera. Um, and DaVinci Resolve. But anyway, so uh, if you found some value out of it, again, please like, subscribe, help me out. Uh, I plan on releasing a lot more of these videos in the future just because, geez, was there like five or six cameras that were released? last year that were all just like awesome and they shoot log and they shoot raw and i think we just have this huge influx of people that are coming in and, and content creators which is awesome but i think there's this huge need now of color grading and like how to um, grade and how to look at colors and i think it, it's been so much fun for me helping you guys out and seeing um, how beneficial it's been for your process so um, yeah, I just have a lot of fun with it and, uh, can't wait to come out with, uh, more, more content for y'all. So, uh, yeah, anyways, thanks for watching and, uh, peace.